Hey everybody, hello, hello, hello. Um, will y'all let me know if I sound like an alien? I'm gonna double check this because I tried to do a Zoom video for you the other day. Oh, okay. So I heard my self in the playback there and I don't sound like an alien. Good stuff. <laughs> so let's get this show on the road. How about that? Everybody okay today? As you come on, say hello. And then hopefully I'll be able to see that you're there. I'm going to leave my camera on this time and I will try not to make any funny faces at you, but there are no promises because let's be honest, I make funny faces when I talk. I also walk and talk. So if it distracts you while I'm walking and talking, I'm sorry but I walk and talk and I pace and somebody told me that they would enjoy seeing me. So here I am. All right, let's get the show rocking and rolling. We're talking about lease options and lease options are one of my absolute favorite topics. When we get into real estate, I'm a complete nerd about it. Hey, when you come on, say hello, say hello in the comments. So I can tell you there. Hello, hello, hello. All right, but I am a total nerd when it comes to real estate and especially lease options. But today we're going to go over the basics. And I got to tell you, my whole journey into real estate, creative financing, all that jazz started with Victor Jernigan way back in November of 2013. And he introduced lease options to me with a $75 um, presentation that the Knoxville Rio was having. I was down to my last $75, but Victor told me if I would come to the event, he would give me my money back if I didn't learn anything. And the moral of that story is that Victor created a monster. All right. This is a picture of me two years later in November of 2015 teaching lease options to the Knoxville Real Estate Investors Association. So I've been doing this for a while, but not forever and ever amen I have been able to do some really cool things and I will show you about those in just a second if you don't know who I am my name is Whitney Nosley I am a travel monster like I love traveling I love hopping around I'm a real estate broker I have filled out the paperwork to retire my license but I haven't sent it in yet so I'm still a broker for Whitney buys houses I love to teach women how they can do deals just like this and I am a dog mom to dog mom to Abby the Labby, but most importantly, I am a real estate investor. Wasn't always like this though. I grew up in Powell, Tennessee, which is a little Mayberry town, especially when I lived there, it was totally Mayberry. Like we had one red lot. We didn't have a Bojangles. It was the middle of nowhere country Knoxville. All right. And my mom was a real estate investor. She's been a real estate investor since I've been alive. I went to UT after I graduated from Powell, went to the University of Tennessee, Knoxville, and my mom was able to put me through college with the money she collected from rent every month. That's what paid for my tuition and my books was the money that she was able to put aside from her real estate empire. I think she had four or five houses then. So when I graduated from UT, I went to work at the family truck company. I'm the fourth generation entrepreneur. My great grandfather started Walker's Truck Contractors in 1939. In 2003, my mom was making $19,000 a year. Working for a family company, she'd been there for over 30 years and she had maxed out at 19 grand a year. And that's when she started Nicely's Construction Excavating. All right, my great grandfather, my grandfather, my mom, and I are all small business owners, or were all small business owners. To be honest though, I got to a point where I was like, you know what mom, I don't really want a truck anymore. I wanna do real estate. And the way my mom would buy houses, she would save up a bunch of money, as much as she could, and every three, four, five years, she'd go buy a house and rent it out. But I thought there has got to be another way other people are buying real estate, but they're not waiting three, four, five, six years in between deals. And that's when I found the Real Estate Investors Association. That's when I found Victor Jernigan. And that's when I found out about lease options. But when I told mom 
that I was going to be doing lease options and start talking to her about owner financing. My mom was like, Whitney, are you sure this isn't illegal? Like you don't really look good in stripes and <laughs> we don't want you to do anything weird. Like don't be the one who screws up everything that the family's been building over the last 70 years. I was like, thanks mom. No pressure. <laughs> but I told her it was not illegal. And the guys at the real estate investor association had convinced me that this was not illegal. Lease options were totally cool. They were fun and anybody could do them. That's when Bruce Barrett came into the picture. Bruce Barrett actually taught that first event that I went to at the Knoxville real estate association. And he mentioned Ron Legrand, which led me to meeting Jay Connor also. So I went in December of 2013 to Jacksonville, Florida to learn as much as I could, much as I could about owner financing and lease options. And while I was there, my boyfriend had a couple opinions about what I was doing, or at least what I was thinking about doing. See, while I was there, I was really excited. So I was calling my boyfriend every night and I was like, oh my gosh, I just learned this. I just learned that these people are you know, rich, they've got all these houses, they've got none of their own money invested in it. And my boyfriend told me that I had church camp mentality, that it would never work, that I had wasted my time, my money and my energy by going to Jacksonville, Florida to try to learn about all this stuff. He basically told me that I needed to get back to work, go back to trucking and keep my head down. If you know me, I'm not very good at being told what to do. <laughs> and I am a millennial, so I don't like being told no. I don't like being told that I couldn't do something. So I basically told him to get lost. I told him to go back to Georgia to leave me alone. I was going to do this real estate thing. I was going to make it happen. And I didn't need that kind of negativity in my life. All right, but before I go too terribly much further, I need your permission here. So tell me in the chats, before we continue down here in the chat, tell me, is it okay if I completely nerd out on you? All right, because I can talk about real estate until the cows come home, but I want to make sure, give me a yes down there in the chat. Let me check and make sure that you're talking to me. Give me a yes down there in the chat to make sure that you are ready for me to nerd out. Ooh, there I am, I'm loud. Yes, 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 okay. Thanks, Jadine, thanks, Nicole. All right, so the girls have given me permission and we're gonna nerd out now. So in 2014, I started buying houses and I got pretty good pretty quick because what I learned was, there was two or three, mm, yeah, two or three kinds of people that really liked signing contracts for lease options with me. And I'm going to tell you some stories about who those people were, but these are all examples of houses that I bought either 2014, 2015, or 2016 that I was able to do a lease option on or a sandwich lease option. And I'll explain all of that in a little bit, but the, these pictures I went around one day for like an hour or two and took all these pictures of all these houses that I'd been buying over the last couple of years. And these aren't all the houses. These are just the ones that I could get to the quickest. <laughs> so let's talk about a lease option. All right. I get this question all the time. Whitney, what is a lease option? I mean, what does that even mean? So real quick, a lease option is a really fancy rental agreement that gives you the opportunity to buy the house in the future or to buy the property in the future. Okay. It's a really, really fancy rental agreement. So let me ask you, and you don't have to say yes to this. You don't have to raise your hand, but I would enjoy some hearts or some likes if you do know this. Do you know anybody that has a mortgage on their house? I mean, just think about that. Do you know anybody in the world that has a mortgage on their house? Yes, of course you do. We all know hundreds, if not thousands of people with mortgages on their house. Okay, so pick one person in your mind 
And if that person with a mortgage on their house decided they wanted to rent their house out, would that be weird? No, that wouldn't be weird, would it? Nobody would have a problem if that person decided to rent their house out to somebody. Now, the same person with the mortgage on their house, if they decided they wanted to sell their house, would anybody have a problem with that? Nope. Nobody would think it was weird if somebody who had a mortgage on their house decided they wanted to sell their house. So a lease option is putting those two things together. I'm going, I, I basically go in and tell my sellers, hey, I'm a professional tenant. What I do is I, I get these properties and I'm looking at your house. I can help you with your problem property and I'm going to start making the payments for you. I'm going to be renting the house from you. I'll make your monthly payment and then I will also be buying the house sometime in the future. That is basically word for word what I tell my sellers because a lease option is just a really fancy rental agreement. I'm just renting the house and I have the right to buy the house in the next five or 10 years. That's it. It doesn't have to be any more complicated than that. All right. So let's talk about what a sandwich lease option is because people ask me all the time, well, what's a sandwich lease option? I get what a lease option is. So when I'm talking to these sellers, I am buying their house. I'm controlling their house. I'm taking the rights, the responsibilities, all of that stuff on as I am buying that house. And then I get in the middle of the deal. Then I turn around and I sell that house. Uh oh, where's my sale? I sell that house. So I give somebody else the rights to buy the house, to make the monthly payments, to keep up with the monthly maintenance on the house. And that's how we get a sandwich lease option. We put a lease option on the side that I'm buying from the seller, and we get a lease option contract on the side that I'm selling to my tenants, my tenant buyers, okay? And the biggest difference here is that when I'm buying these houses, I usually buy the house for what the people owe on it. I usually get my monthly payment to pretty much match what their monthly payment is. But then, and I don't give them any money to start doing this because I usually find people who don't need money to move. They just need somebody to take over their payments. Okay. So I don't give them any money. I buy the house for what they owe on it and I take over their monthly payments. Then on the flip side of it, I have people who want to buy the house from me, but they're going to buy the house for what it's worth. They're going to give me money to move in and they're going to pay a higher monthly payment. So I get to make money three different ways. And we'll get into that in a little bit. I got a money example to show you. So when we talk about lease options, that falls under the umbrella of creative financing. So does owner financing, so just so subject to and wraps, wraparounds. But I'm going to tell you, I do not do subject to deals because in subject to deals, that's when the title transfers out of the seller's name. The mortgage stays in their name, but the title transfers to my name. And when the title transfers to my name, that is what sends up the red flag at the bank that the bank could call the whole note due. That's what enacts the due on sale clause. And that's what everybody's really worried about and really scared about in creative financing is nobody wants the bank to call their note due. Well, duh, I don't either. So I don't do subject to, that way title doesn't transfer. I get a rental agreement with the opportunity to buy the house later. I also don't do wraparound mortgages. And let me put my mic down so I can show you. Y'all like me being on camera? When I'm explaining this stuff so you can see me instead of just being behind the slides. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So in a wraparound, somebody has, let's say the phone is the house. Somebody has a mortgage on their house, right? Does that make sense? A house is sitting there and there's paperwork that attaches the mortgage to the house. Well, in a wraparound, what I do as the buyers, I come through and my attorney really makes a new mortgage that wraps around the other mortgage. 
Okay, so it wraps it up. The seller's mortgage is on the house, and then my new mortgage wraps around that one. Now, the thing I don't like about wraparounds is that first mortgage that's wrapped around the house, let's say the house is $100,000, that's fine. But then when I create another mortgage that wraps around it for $100,000, now it looks like this house is mortgaged $200,000. It's a little weird. I'm not in Texas, so I don't do wraps. Okay. I do lease options because I can buy on a lease option and I can sell on a lease option. Now I know what you're thinking. Well, I don't know exactly what you're thinking, but I have a pretty good guess. Who in their right mind is going to sign up for one of these lease option deals? Right? And I can hear you. I'm in a hot seller's market. All right, fine. Or, I don't have $20,000 or 20% to put down. All right, cool, I hear you. But let me tell you three stories of people who represent characters of people who are, on, who are in your area and would love for you to do a lease option with them. All right, this is the first house that I ever got under lease option. I was buying it for 122. I signed the paperwork at the end of February. My first payment wasn't due until June. I was able to put this house on Zillow, which is free. Put the house on Zillow for 145. I had a call the next day that a couple out of Chicago wanted to buy the house and they offered me 135. I said, okay, fine, I can still make that happen because that was 13,000. I'm from Powell, but I can do pretty quick math like that. And the kicker was these people were leaving Chicago and moving to East Tennessee and they said, they basically asked me, hey, we'd like to rent this house from you until our house in Chicago sells. And I was like, okay, that sounds perfect. I can give you a year because, you know, I didn't know what kind of house they were working with. I didn't know if it would pass inspection. I didn't know if it would pass appraisal. I didn't know any of that stuff. So I said, I'll give you a year. You pay me a thousand bucks a month and I'll let you buy it for 135 if you put, I don't remember how much I told them to put down. They said, no problem. A week later, they came down, looked at the house, loved it. They gave me $3,000 the very first time I ever met these people. They gave me $3,000. That was the middle of March. And that $3,000 was to pay rent for March, April, and May. That way I wouldn't show the house to anybody else or sell the house to anybody else. And they started moving their stuff down from Chicago. They called me later on that week, maybe towards the end of March. And they were like, Hey, Whitney, our house in Chicago sold. So we're going to be able to close it and close out this house the first of May. And I was like, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I was like, party on. Yes. And sure enough, they did. They sold their house the first of May. They brought a U-Haul with the rest of the stuff that they hadn't moved into the house and they closed the house. So I made over $15,000 on this house because they paid me for two months, April and May, while they were moving in March, April and May, 15th to 15th to 15th. And my payment wasn't due on the house. So I had $13,000 of the difference, 122 to 135 plus $2,000 of rent because I didn't have a payment due. I made 15 grand in eight weeks and I had $10 invested. That's some good stuff. This is another house that I bought um, in my honey hole. This is in Newmarket, Tennessee. And this, I had, a, I had a bandit sign out on the road. I'll show you what one of those looks like in just a second. But I had a bandit sign out on the road because I was trying to sell another house in Newmarket. But this guy called and he said, hey, I see that you've got a three bedroom, one bath in Newmarket. I've got a three bedroom, one bath in Newmarket and I want you to buy it from me. And I was like, all right, fine. What's the address? I'll look it up. I'll come and make you an offer, blah, 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 blah. And he was like, no, no, this sign says Whitney buys houses. You buy houses. I'll be at your office in 10 minutes. Get your paperwork together. You can buy it for what I owe on it. 
um, okay. <laughs> Again, I was so excited. Like, and he showed up in 10 minutes and he was like, what do you need from me? What do you need me to sign? What do you need from me? I'm getting divorced. This is the last thing that's keeping us together. I can move on and have a nice, happy life, but I don't want to have to worry about this house. I don't want to have to worry about the payments. I don't want to have to do anything to it. I want to sign this today and give you the keys and be done with it. And that's what we did. So I got this house and in less than three months, I had somebody give me $10,000 to move in because this guy that called me off the bandit sign didn't want any money. He just wanted me to start making his payment and he would let me buy the house for what he owed on it. I'm actually talking to the people that moved in. They gave me the 10,000 to move in and they're supposed to be buying this house from me at the end of June. I sent them the contract on that this morning and I'll be making another $12,000 when my tenant buyers get their mortgage on this house. So I'm gonna make 22 grand plus monthly income on a house that I don't have anything invested in. That's some cool stuff. And I want you to notice these houses I'm showing you, these aren't little dinky houses. These are nice family, starter family or secondary houses. Second houses, not secondary like vacation houses, but like as your family gets bigger, you need bigger houses, you know? Okay, so this lady called, um, actually she had a for sale by owner sign in her front yard. She had a FISBO sign in her front yard and I called her and I gave her my whole spiel and she was like, no, nah, I think I'm just going to try to get rid of it myself. And I was like, all right, that's fine. Call me if something changes. Well, a month later she called. Nobody else had made her an offer and nobody else had come and looked at it and she was tired of making the payments on it. What happened was she was married to a gentleman and I'm pretty sure he passed away. And then she got remarried. Well, her new husband didn't want to move into her old husband's house. So she was making payments on an empty house and she didn't want to be a landlord. Life happens sometimes, guys. And I'm there to help these sellers stop making payments on empty houses. I'm there to make sure that they don't have to be a landlord if they don't want to be a landlord. I'm there so that they can go on and live their life and not have to worry about what's going on with this house. So again, I had three months before I had to start making my payments and right at my three month mark, I had somebody that gave me $5,000 and they moved in and the house wasn't exactly amazing, but it was fine. But after about six months, the people that gave me 5,000 stopped paying me. And when I get these 5,000, 10,000, 15,000, I don't just go to Vegas on that. I keep that money. And my payment on this house is 800 and something. So I basically had $5,000 of their money to make the payment if they stopped paying me, right? So I'm still not coming out of pocket because I just used their five grand to make the payments for a month or two. After, this is the only house I had to evict anybody on, full disclosure. I did have to evict that first guy. But after he moved out in December, in January, I had another couple who had fallen in love, gotten married, gave me $15,000, and the first week of February, they moved into the house all hunky-dory, right? So in less than a year, I've made $20,000 off this house. Well, I had to make some payments in there, but I actually rented it back out for $1,200 and my payments eight something, so I'm clearing 300 bucks, so I'm close, maybe 18,000 on this house. But that second couple that moved in, you know, they got married in a fever, right? And by July 4th, that fever had chilled off. By August, she was still there, but he was gone, and by September, she was gone. This is 2017. January 2017, I got 15 grand for this couple to move in the house. By September, they were gone. By December, I had somebody else give me $12,000 to move into this house. So in a year, I made $15,000 and $12,000 on this same house that I don't have any money invested in. 15 and 12. Is that still 27? 27,000 off one house. That's pretty cool stuff, guys. How many times a month would you like to make 15000 or 12000 or heck, even $5,000? I've made 
20, 32,000 plus monthly income on this house. And when the latest guy buys it, I think he paid 125 for the house and I owe about 95. So I'll be making $30,000 then when he gets a mortgage. It's like 50 grand that I'm going to make on one house that I don't have any money invested in because I was just helping a seller and I was helping somebody who wants to buy a house. It's good stuff. When you're helping people get into real estate, it's really, really fun stuff. So again, those are three examples of people who are totally okay with doing a lease option, which is just a really fancy rental agreement that also gives them the right to buy the property. So when I buy these houses, when I showed you these houses, I have five or 10 years, but my tenant buyers, the people that move into the house only give them one or two years. Okay. So they have a shorter amount of time and I give them the sandwich lease option deal where I'm buying it with a lease option and I'm selling it with a lease option. We call these slows sandwich lease options with Whitney. <laughs> So now that I've explained these three people who are totally down with doing these options, do you know anybody? Has anybody come up in your mind that may be interested in doing a lease option? Because if you haven't thought of anybody yet, hang tight, you will. All right, I've got three secrets to share with you today. I'm going to talk about your why, why you want to get into real estate investing. I'm going to talk about your leads and the old, slow, boring way that the gurus are teaching versus your friends and the new fun ways you can be getting leads. Let's first talk about your why. When I was trucking, my mom thought I needed to be at the office Monday through Friday, nine to five. Y'all, she expected me to work on Friday afternoons until five o'clock. That's ridiculous. All right. When I was at UT, I didn't take classes on Friday because I have better things to do with my time on Friday afternoons, like go to the lake or go to the zoo or go to an amusement park or go do something besides being chained to a desk on a Friday afternoon. Nobody should have to live like that. But my family was very important to me. Most of y'all have a very important family to you, whether it's your kids or your parents or somebody. The ladies I talk to always tell me that they're getting into real estate investing for their family. whether it's they want to be able to take care of their parents as they get older or whether they want to be able to leave a legacy for their kids. And I mean, I'm here, I don't have kids, but I would love to be able to leave a legacy to know that I mattered while I was here. All right. And a lot of ladies I talk to don't have kids, but they still want to make sure that they leave an impact they are able to impact the world while they're here and help these sellers out of these problem properties. Now let's talk about your leads. This is an example of a yellow letter. It's a basically a yellow piece of paper that says, Hey, I want to buy your house. Call me if you want to get rid of it. And this is what, you know, the gurus are teaching on Saturday mornings. And I, I do teach yell letters because a lot of my ladies have huge amounts of success with yell letters. So I still teach this. I also teach bandit signs and bandit signs are those signs on the side of the road. You've probably seen them at a four way stop. You've seen them up on the telephone poles. You've just seen bandit signs around, but you know what they're called. My bandit signs look different than anybody else's because I do bandit signs totally different than anybody else. I also, get leads off my bandit signs because they are so different. See, that's the thing. Everybody's putting up the same sign. I want you to put up a different sign and I want you to collect all the leads off those signs. There's tons of leads in your area. Let's talk about that for a second. So one of the things that I teach is how to find a honey hole and a honey hole is where you go to make the money, honey. All right. It's where you are the queen bee. It's like, you know, fishing in a barrel. And this, this is my honey hole. So let me show you, you see the smiley face down here. That's downtown Knoxville. 
when I go to the real estate investors association meetings, everybody's talking about how hot the market is and how they can't get any deals done and they can't do this and that and the other. And so-and-so is fighting with so-and-so and there's so much competition and blah, 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 blah. All those people are fighting over all of these deals in that smiley face and even further out West Knoxville. But these pink triangles, those are my houses. The red hearts, those are my mama's houses. And these black dots, there's two right here and then two on up here. Those are my apartments. And actually right here, kind of this pink dot, that's where the county line is. So when I was getting started, I, I lived right here in this little heart right there close to downtown Knoxville, but I was driving out to this heart to work at the trucking company. Okay. And when I got there, I was in a different county. And since I was already working out here, I decided instead of driving all the way back over here and fighting with everybody and having all this competition, all this, you know, crap I had to deal with, I decided that I would just hang out out here in one county over. And I did 14 deals out here in less than nine months. And I didn't have any competition. Nobody was ripping up my bandit signs. My yellow letters were going to people who had never gotten a yellow letter before. And then the next year I came back into Knoxville after I had experience, after I had uh, confidence, after I had, you know, Mm, referrals references that's when I went back into the hot market so this is one thing that I teach you how to do how to go away from the trendy spots because it's just your pride wanting you to be in those trendy spots I want you to be where you're gonna make the money honey I want you to be where you're gonna be able to do big deals and do them fast and let your confidence soar as well as your bank account. I want you to take the road less traveled. Sherry is one of my ladies who bought a vacation rental house with no money down. She had nine days to make her payments. She got 15 year terms on this and this house right here stays booked 12 months a year. She makes between 10 and $15,000 a month off this one deal. And Sherry actually has six of these houses. How would you like six houses to pay you 10 grand a month? Yeah, some good stuff, right? Sherry does not do yellow letters or bandit signs. And that's why I say you've got to be talking to your online friends. You've got to be letting people know on Facebook, on Craigslist, on Zillow, in Facebook groups, you've got to be letting people online know that you buy houses. There's tons and tons and tons of way, ways to let your friends and family know without being spammy or cheesy or feeling like you're stepping on anybody else's toes. For example, Janine, and Janine was watching earlier. Say hi if you're still here, Janine. Janine put a Facebook post up and said, hey, I'm looking for some houses. She put a picture of a house up and there's some other things that we go through there. Within 24 hours, Janine had a lead back. Janine lives in um, outside of San Francisco in California and this lead came back on a house in Virginia and when it came back, Janine was gonna be going to visit that area pretty quickly and she actually went by, looked at it and I think they've got a deal worked out for later this summer. But if you're trying to do yell letters and bandit signs and it's just not working you really need to tap into your friends list daisy i was doing one of these webinars one night and i put a prompt up and daisy put the prompt up while we were on the webinar and in less than an hour she was like oh my gosh i'm getting people messaging me with leads and in 24 hours, she sent me a message. She was like, Whitney, how do I make these leads stop? <laughs> I was like, don't let it stop. Keep going. Collect all those leads that you can. Your friends have houses that they don't want anymore. Finally, this is a picture of Leslie. She joined me in First Deal Done Fast in the fall, I think in September, October. And she cashed four checks on four properties that she had a dollar invested in each one of them but she cashed 
$40,000 worth of checks in less than four months. And she's gone on to close more deals. And in fact, yesterday she posted in our group that she's got two duplexes with owner financing. Ah, duplexes with owner financing. That means she's not going to have to go to the bank. She doesn't have to put 20% down. She starts immediately cash flowing. And I'm, I'm so proud of all these ladies for getting out there and getting their deals and moving through this process because it's not as cumbersome as you may think you need a really strong why because there's ups and downs i'm not gonna lie there's some ups and downs but when you have that really strong why when you have that reason that you get up and do this every day all day that's going to bring in more leads and leads turn into deals deals turn into money but you need a fresh river of leads coming in all the time so that you have enough leads to turn into deals because every deal doesn't close and every deal isn't a home run. But when you have those deals, you get to go to closing and you get to make that money, honey. You also get to help your friends and family get out of houses that they don't want. Everybody knows somebody who has a house that is a pain in the neck and they just don't want to have to deal with it anymore. When you learn how to implement lease options, when you learn how amazing, like the really intricate parts of lease options, when you learn about that, you're going to be the go-to person in your honey hole to help all the sellers. And then you don't have to worry about marketing so much. So now I've got, you know, my houses rocking and rolling and I started getting bombarded with women who were like, Hey, I'm tired of going to these meetings. I'm tired of signing up for these coaching programs where it's some guy up at the front of the room and he talks down to me and he's just disrespectful and all this stuff. And these women are like, Whitney, will you help me? Will you teach me? How did you get to do all these deals? What is what's going on? So I decided in January of this year that I'm teaching women. I'm teaching women because I grew up with a strong female real estate investor in my life. And even though she didn't know how to invest outside of just buy and hold, she still showed me the way. So I'm here on a mission to help every single woman know that they can buy houses and they should be buying houses every week. It's totally possible. And so that, that's why I teach women. I also teach women because we just speak the same language, y'all. There's just certain things that go on when we're talking that just makes more sense. And I know this because when I was coaching with men, when I had men real estate investors like telling me what to do, I would still have to go back and translate that into me. So what I've done now that I'm coaching women is I take all that out and we just talk directly in simple terms that sellers can understand. So now I want you to imagine if you could do one deal per month and one deal brought in a $10,000 non-refundable option fee, which were those big checks that I was getting. And if you stayed in the middle of these deals and you made $300 a month between what you were paying the seller or what you were paying the bank and what you were collecting from the rent, I just need you to make $300 a month in the spread there. If you did one deal a month and made $10,000 every single month and started rolling $300 a month, in two years, you would have made $240,000. And I'm telling you, in Knoxville, that's more than most people make in four or five years. But it's totally possible. It only takes one deal a month to start this. And the coolest part is, after 24 months, you'll have 24 houses paying you free and clear an overage of $300 a month. That means on your 24th month, you're going to collect $10,000 and $7,200 in rent. That's a $17,000 month. After three years of doing this over and over, 
you'll be clearing over $10,000 a month. Now tell me if you're excited. Like who doesn't want an extra $10,000 a month? Because one deal a month, you can do this and still have your job. You can do this and still be a stay-at-home mom. You can do this and still volunteer, still be a good wife, still be a good daughter. You can still do everything that you're trying to do with just one deal a month. Because what I hate is when the guys try to tell you that you need to be, you know, doing 10 deals a month or you're never going to make a million dollars. I hate that. I don't need that kind of pressure in my life. One deal a month, steady and consistently, will give me all the freedom that I need to live the life that I want to live. Or if you want to keep going after you're making 10 grand a month, if you want to make 20 grand a month, if you want to make 30 grand a month, that's totally possible too. I'm just saying if you're just trying to get either out of a job or get your husband out of a job or get your retirement built up or whatever it is you're trying to do, it's totally possible with real estate. So I've created First Deal Done Fast because I needed to be able to put these videos and these worksheets and these contracts and everything that I had in my brain and in my business, I need to put it in one neat little package for you. And I came up with first deal done fast because when you get your first deal done, it gives you momentum to keep going and doing those other deals, right? And the faster you can get it done, the sooner you can get to the closing, the more money you can make, the better deals you can do, all of that. That's what first deal done fast is all about. And I base first deal done fast and I base Whitney buys houses off Proverbs 31 16, which says she goes to inspect a field and she buys it with her earnings. She plants a vineyard. Now to me, that says that a Proverbs 31 woman knows her market. She knows her honey hole. She knows what she's going to do with this property. She doesn't ask her husband for permission to go buy this land. She doesn't ask her daddy for the money. No, she goes out and she buys it. And then the second part is with her earnings, she plants a vineyard. So Proverbs 31 woman is a businesswoman. She's got lots of things going on. She's got those seven streams of income coming at her. And she uses all of that money, her surplus money, to plant a vineyard. Now, a vineyard is important because that's generational wealth. She's setting her kids up right there in this verse. It's also important because I like to drink wine. <laughs> and I think a Proverbs 31 woman like to have a good time, right? So that's what we do in First Deal Done Fast because all you need to do is find that first field, all right? You need that first deal. You need that first house. You need that momentum. You need all of that stuff swirling around so that you can get your deals done fast. Now, who is First Deal Done Fast work for? Small business owners, stay-at-home moms, corporate moms, accountants, doctors, really anyone who wants passive income or anyone who wants an extra $10,000 a month. That's who First Deal Done Fast works for. And the best part of First Deal Done Fast is that all the hard work has been done for you. Yes, there's some things that you need to do, but I've collected and I've, you know, mined out all the golden nuggets from all sorts of different programs and gurus and all that stuff. And I've tweaked it so that you get the ease of implementation and so that you can speed up your results. Because it took me eight weeks to get my first deal done. It took, um, it took Leslie right at eight weeks to get her first deal done. But in the first six months, she's made more money than I did in my first six months. Because I had to bang my head against the wall trying to figure out what I was going to do. The other ladies that are in the program are getting deals left and right. We're always having a party in the First Deal Done Fast student group because every day when I log in, somebody's got some other celebration and some other exciting thing going on. Even in, in the First Deal Done Fast student group, we're crazy enough to celebrate the no's because we know every time a seller tells us no, we're just one step closer to a yes. So if you're wondering about my boyfriend, if you're still hanging out to find out about the love story and you don't really care about real estate, two weeks after I told him to go back to Georgia, he came back 
to Tennessee, you know, the way men do with flowers and dinner and I'm sorry, you were right. You're going to be amazing at this because I know you got your heart set on it. And then we started buying apartments together. <laughs> we went from this isn't going to work to signing up for apartment school. And then three months later, buying three apartment complexes. And still to this day, we have those three complexes and he is my partner in life and in business because in October, we close the big deal. So when you sign up for First Deal Done Fast, one of the things I'm going to do is once you get your uh, login information, then I'm going to also get your address and I'm going to mail you this welcome package. Okay, so you're going to get the First Deal Done Fast workbook. You're going to get a copy of my She Conquered book. You're going to get the real estate dictionary. It's going to be wrapped up in this pretty paper with the polka dots on it. You're going to get a yellow pad of paper so you can immediately get started on your yellow letters. I'm going to send you a packet of other information, you know, some homework sheets and some, uh, you know, our creed is in there, some templates for you to use. There's a pack of information in there that's really, really important. And I'm going to send you three of the I Buy Houses buttons. Oh, also there's uh, highlighters and pins. I mean, there's just all sorts of goodies in this welcome package that I'm going to send you after you sign up for First Sale Done Fast. It's everything you need to know to start getting your deals done. All you got to do is go to firstdealdonefast.com. Firstdealdonefast.com. All the information is there. There's some pictures of other people that have joined. There's pictures of me in there. I think there's some videos in there. Firstdealdonefast.com is where you need to go so you can get started getting your first deal done fast. Once you get your first deal done fast package in the mail, I want you to take a picture wearing your button and holding your package or take a picture when you open your package and make sure you put that picture into the group so that we can all celebrate you getting started with your first deal done fast. So that's what I have. Does anybody have any questions? I will hop on Facebook right now and make sure my volume is down so I don't bust anybody's eardrums. Okay, anybody have any questions? Questions, questions, questions. There's a little bit of a time delay, so if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me a message or you can send me an email, info at WhitneyNicely.com, info at WhitneyNicely.com and I'll be glad to answer any kind of questions that you have. I'll see y'all later. Bye y'all.